Hey, what's going on guys? Jeff Koga here and I decided to uh, do this quick live stream and talk about something called uh, good to know trade secrets versus uh, must know trade secrets, all right? And I figure I talk about this is because I actually commented back on someone who asked a question in one of my Facebook groups. Uh, it's called uh, Real Estate Marketing Mastermind. If you're not part of it, highly recommend for you to uh, join. Uh, we got about almost close to 13,000 people in that group in the real estate space and uh, this particular person asked about what are good targeting that I should do for Facebook ads, right? That's what they asked, okay? And I think I'm paraphrasing, but that's what they asked. And it's going to tie into this actual topic of good to know versus must know trade secrets. And this is something that I struggled with for me personally when I had a younger age, right? Why is because I just been kind of uh, genuinely curious on what the world. So the good to know trade secrets, okay, in context of targeting on Facebook. Facebook. especially because you know like everyone's like ah Facebook 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 this is where you can get the you can get business and stuff like that right which is 100% true uh, you can get business for matter of fact any business you have right like I use Facebook for my e-commerce business I use it for my real estate business I use it for my uh, digital marketing agency where I help uh, people in the real estate space as well as people in the actual real estate information publishing space right so a lot of the courses that are out in the how-to do X, Y, and Z in real estate. I've actually have worked with a lot of the big players and helped them create offers and stuff like that. But here's here's why it's important to understand good to know versus must know trade secrets, okay? So this person asked, what are some targeting, right? So if you're a real estate agent or even a real estate investor, you know, the easiest thing, and I responded back was I was just like, look, and I was just like, I, want, I don't want to sound like a jerk. Anyone that's really great at running advertisement or great at what they're doing, they are not going to give that information to you, okay? They are not. They're not gonna give that information to you. Think about this for a second, okay? Is if you have something in your business and your livelihood depends on that, okay? Why is because that's how you make money by generating leads, okay? And you know that you're in a hyper competitive marketplace. Would you just blindly go into a you know a free Facebook group with almost 13,000 people in there and then be like, yeah, you know, this is what I actually go after. This is how my business makes money. The chances of you doing that is slim to none, okay? And this is where you gotta listen to and then really pay attention to this stuff, right? And you, again, if you're watching this video up to this point, then clearly you're curious. And I'm a firm believer that you can live in the space of ignorance and or you can live in the space of curiosity. And I think if you're watching this video, hearing my voice, and you're clearly curious on what I'm talking about. Um, but anyone that's great at it and actually legitimately making money doing that, they won't openly talk in an open space. Why? It's because someone can just take that information and run it in their same marketplace and guess what? Now they're out of luck with their actual uh, campaign and especially in the fact that someone else doesn't know what the hell they're doing they're gonna go in there and try to drop a couple hundred dollars then their cost per lead is gonna go up so why would they actually give you that information they're not and if they do you got to ask yourself what's in it for them right like really ask yourself right someone goes in there on a public forum and then starts actually like dropping some stuff up okay and you got to ask what's in it for them because the counter perspective on what's in it for them is typically Okay, if they're doing that, one, they run a marketing agency, and or two, there has some type of incentive to sell you some type of how-to course. Okay, and that's why they're giving you some type of targeting advice. And and you gotta pay attention to that is because too many people are, especially in the space, like there are so many courses on real estate advertisement, right? So they're coming in here and and they're teaching generic marketing, right? Why is because it's so easy, like targeting, like, oh yeah, you want buyers, go to the demographic behavior section and go after people that are first time home buyers. Oh yeah, target people that are likely to move. Oh yeah, you know, hey, if you wanna get after sellers, go after people that are homeowners, right? That's, that's the kind of the crap that they say, which is like, man, you can just Google and you can find it, okay? But the challenge is that's not what you need to be successful, right? And that's what I mean by good to know trade secrets versus uh, must know trade secrets, right? Good to know trade secrets is like, hey, you know what? Hey, you can pay advertisement and then make money, right? That's that's a good good enough. But to be successful in it, to actually win in your marketplace or whatever business that you're in, you gotta have kind of the the secret sauce or or the must know trade secrets is where you need to start understanding the targeting and then even the ad copy. So to kind of give you more tactical advice for anyone 
that's watching it right now is you need to do overlay. So this lady that asked that question, I gave them an example. I say, look, ain't nobody gonna give you that stuff. And if they do, they have other incentives, all right? And uh, you have to wonder, says, hey, you're not gonna do that publicly. Now, if you're part of like a mastermind group or you're part of like other marketers and stuff like that, and you're not in direct competition or you have kind of like a gentleman's agreement uh, that you're not gonna do that stuff, right? And you're bouncing ideas. Yeah, with all means, they're going to share that information, right? Like I have, I have friends of mine and I'm part of mastermind groups and stuff like that. And we share freaking really, really crazy stuff in there. And the crazy part is like I was telling this lady, I said, look, man, there's people in certain groups in like the real estate space that does like services, right? In the real estate space, like consultants and or sell products. And they'll be like, hey, they'll go in the in the group and and even people who run like brokerages, some, uh, some of my friends and I actually have a client of mine that actually goes in there and they'll give generic advice on that's actually like, that's not what they're doing. And the reason why they do that is because they don't want people in their marketplace actually running the same type of campaigns or the same type of carpeting. Uh, 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 of marketing. Why? Is because their cost is going to go up. So they want to keep their competition always like chasing the next shiny object and that's what they do. And it's not anything new, okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this. If you've been in the game of internet or in the game of business, you know, people do that all day long. Like when I was doing like PPC campaign for Google and stuff like that and some of my uh, guys I learned from that spends like millions and millions of dollars for their clients every single month, they do that purposefully. Why? Is because there's tools where you can reverse engineer and actually see what type of ads people are running on Google as well as you can see what type of keywords that they're bidding on and what they're actually bidding at right there's tools like that so you can see that they're paying like you know thousands of dollars why because they're spending millions so of course they're gonna pay that and then they can see the ad and they can be like oh wow hey this ad's been running for now six months and they're bidding this price and here's the actual landing page that they're using. Here's the actual copy of the ad. Here's the landing page, here's the thank you page. And here, when you opt in, these are the email sequence that they're using to actually sell this particular product or widget. And <coughs> And if you have that, guess what? You can go into a marketplace and then you can literally crush your competition, okay? Because you can find that information out and if you, as long as you're willing to, you know, spend more money than your competition to acquire a customer, you can actually, like, leave your competitors behind, okay? Like, leave them in the dust, okay? So to avoid that, what smart marketers do is they'll leave up what I like to call dummy ads on Google, okay? Where they'll create ads and they'll actually bid on it and bid on the wrong keywords purposefully as kind of a lost leader so they're like, it's like screw it I rather actually spend money and lose money on stuff that doesn't convert but I rather do that so my competition can't knock me off and they'll actually have that ad running for months right so if someone pulls up that data and they look at it and they're trying to penetrate a new marketplace they'll look at it and be like oh my gosh they're doing that and then they'll start going in they're trying to run that ad but at least that bought them time because they're running the actual same ads and paying attention to what the competition is doing and they can actually throw them from a loop so it's the same world now. Facebook is a little bit harder now because the, those tools does not exist. I'm all, it does exist, but it's not. It's not as Google. Okay, like the tools that because Google has been around for a long time, right? So on Facebook, the tools are there, but it's a little bit harder. Okay, um, there there are a couple of new ones that are popping up left and right. I'm subscribed to them, so I can see like what competitors are running, especially like in the real estate space. But that's gonna happen. It, you know, it's just it's just the way it is. So I was explaining to this lady that I was asking the question, hey, what kind of targeting would you do? I was like, dude, man, ain't nobody gonna give this give that information to you if they're legitimately making money off that, unless they have alternate motives, like they run a marketing agency like they're trying to sell courses and or like they're trying to uh, making sure that uh, they look at your profile right that you're in the group and they're like oh snap they're in this uh, they're in my same state or same city and they're like hey let me give that information out but give them the wrong information right so um, those are things that occur and you have to be aware of that okay the you know big businesses has been doing that for years okay years right um, same thing as what I like to call playing offense versus playing defense and business Business, right so by you throwing people in the loop you're playing literally offense okay versus someone knocks you off and then your cost per lead goes up and you're just like oh crap right and uh, so so you're instead of playing defense and then now you're trying to compete in the marketplace you want to play offense so again it's the same concept in the Facebook world space so I gave this person an example I said look man if you want to if you want to run an ad for a buyer I said hey you can run like VA loans right like let's just say you want to do VA loans then 
then I say you can run a demographic behavior where the household composition is made of someone that's uh, an actual veteran, right? That's number one. And then what you do is you exclude anyone that has donated to a nonprofit uh, organization that's actually related to veterans. That's a nonprofit organization. And then from there, you want to go after individuals that are technology early adopters. And then you overlay that again with exclusion of people in the real estate industry. Like for example, using like job titles, right? Like real estate agents, realtor, real estate developers, um, uh, escrow officer, title officers, okay? Mortgage origin right um mortgage brokers whatever it is you exclude everyone in the real estate space why is because why the heck do you want your competition seeing your ad okay and then simultaneously you put an age gap that fits obviously kind of like that's like does stuff right like you put an age gap you're not gonna run someone for like a VA loan that they're like 18 years old right so you take your area like 25 years old or whatever and go up to maybe like 50 or whatever 55 and then you actually run the ad all right now clearly I'm not gonna give the copy of that but I said hey you can do that but you have to understand why that works okay number one is the exclusion the key one is exclusion of, of people who have donated to a veteran charity now why are we excluding those individuals because typically those individuals are a little bit more sophisticated um, in terms of how veterans can get government back loans and buy actually houses at 0% down, right? It's a special loan program that they can get. So you actually block that because if you run ads in front of the people that are already know the inside scoop of what veterans, you know, and the type of government assistance you can get for veterans loan, you're going to be wasting money right so you exclude that and then now you're targeting people the other one is you're going to target people that are early adopters in technology and why do you want to go after early adopters in technology is because they're going to be more inclined to actually physically opt into your ad versus people that are not actually early adopters okay so you have to understand why that targeting works and um and then that's what i was trying to explain in the actual post i don't know if she'll actually get it because that's like a whole whole like hour conversation to explain that um, but that's what I mean by good to know and must know trade secrets and there's so many other ones that you can use